ladies, gentlemen, and racist pieces in between. Yo, this is your boy. And this is your dude, Soap Apple, again with another episode of the Soap Apple Incognito Podcast. And as we all know, that all stands for the Spick Podcast. But hey, and I know I said this every week, <laughs> this definitely should be the last one. I can almost promise it. Uh, we're going to get back with Arizona Verse, kick off the new Arizona South show, and get into the funky Himalaya. Or is it funky? Oh, something. And I'm I'm getting my '90s references wrong. Oh no, um, <laughs> we're about to get a new rendition of the Unblackies Mexican podcast, which I'm sure if you subscribe to this, if you even listen to me at any point in time, is more than likely because of that show. So be expecting much more better things. In the words of Joe Osteen, God bless you. And, um, yeah, this week has been brought to you by the excitement of Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, quick, I guess, a linear note. Um, I was working the elections, this whatever general elections is going on right now. Kind of stumbled upon it. Totally did not even want to mess with it because I had my drum in Arizona, some phone number from New Jersey was calling and then on top of that everyone seemed to be some sort of India or Hindu type on the phone via emails I was like man this might be full of ish I don't know if I can trust this and at the same time I had grown super weary of not weary I've grown tired, a little beat, a little just misled from so many of the job fairs that I saw postings of, that I would get emails and updates and tweets and what have you. I was looking every which way on, uh, you know, how to go into the next venture, not knowing if I should, you know what I'm saying, lose all that I've built to go slum it on some couches to try to, you know, reach greatness and, you know, whatever which way that most people have to stumble and hit rock bottom towards in, in order to finally find. And instead, because obviously I have responsibilities and I don't think I can just dick around like that, uh, at least not like I could could have back in the day, uh, you know, decided to take the more responsible route as far as pretty much doing things that you don't want to have to do. And I don't know if y'all remember, I've grabbed my bit about, you know, health care and, and both the BSs of, uh, of how we're forced to have it and how it, how it forces us into pain into something that we can't even afford to actually use. And then, but we have to, if we want to, you know, remain tip top once the taxes come or else all them, all them dollar bills that, you know, we get before we ever see, you know, will stay forever gotten away because of some loophole BS strategy that, uh, corporate America has, has built upon. But I don't want you to get lost in the thinking. I'm just going to ramble about that. Again, deep subject. And if ever y'all would want to get in with it with me, please reach at me on uh, most social medias. Again, at Soap Apple. That's S-O-U-L-P-A-P-O. I'm hoping once Arizona Verse gets back on the show, we can hopefully get into the nitty and gritty and not hold back any feelings. Uh, we shall see about that. Um, but again, going back to having to figure out what, what to do, how to pay the bills, uh, shooting for, and again, shooting for some kind of greatness out there beyond the realms that I can understand, you know, in God's hands, so to speak. So while I'm wishing, hoping on that, <laughs> I'm also trying to hit every base that I possibly can as far as what I've done before, what's, you know, paid bills before, what, you know, at what point was things so easy other than, look, you know, focusing on the first world problems of hating work, uh, which is terrible in itself because, again, that's where we legitly we spend most of our time. You know, if we're not washing our ass and going to rush to get gas so we can make it to work, we're at work. We're commuting. We're, you know, spending all this time. So it's like so that's a very big deal. And to not have that be on the up and up or to have that be the most pleasant of this, then you're looking at a shit fuck stack of, you know, so much, so much that could go wrong. And uh, so, again, knowing, manning up, I guess you can say, from not giving too many shits on 
on how harsh that reality is and just you just gotta deal with it right at, at some point you gotta literally shit or get off the pot and you know either you deal with the heat or you can't and i guess you know that to be told of what has become of you anyway so visa v as i'm as i'm shooting for that again shooting for something that i i'm regretting before i can ever even attempt um doing whatever i can in the meantime as well and for again so because of that all these red flags that i was thinking is on some bs didn't turn out to be such bs and, I, and apparently we our freaking government <laughs> outsources everything and you figure for being a county for being a city for being all this and whatnot that they would have in-house or in-state sort of agencies that would do this sort of thing so uh, whatever that, that's a, I guess a whole nother ramble and rant for uh, another day um, but mo- mo- but for sure again so it got me into the doors and from what I was seeing it really kind of mind you it seemed like a system that was easy to manipulate like legit seen uh, or heard of some lady uh, you know that would come in clock in through some old uh, what seems to be advanced but really it's just on some BS sort of system and be out you know she might make it at the end of the day i guess maybe just in time maybe to work an hour and, and to ultimately sign out as if she'd been working that eight hour shift like it's legit hogwash and i was thinking so of course when i see that i'm thinking well how is that not being exploited you know what i'm saying to the fullest who knows didn't make it to that point um, but I did notice on how things were handled and just the slowness and and really lack of, you know, like there's there's security footage when, you know, supposedly rolling at all times, but people can give a F. And seeing, again, the, the old process that they do, there's so much room for someone to, you know, make, you know, something their way or to try to, you know, if you had someone radical enough, like there's no freaking doubt Um you know that uh, there could be stuff can go in whatever favor, uh, or you know whatever the wind supposedly were to blow, and with that I was also looking at um, the big wigs, you know, because everyone seemed to be done but ground something. Well, where are these big wigs at? Because they had to make more of a splash, and these other people who look like they're suffering, you know, on some third world problem ish. And sure as day, I saw him coming in, suited, booted, glammed up, ready for photo ops. And because, you know, of course, you know, they're taking the selfies and they're taking pictures into the into the workroom, which legit almost seemed like some sort of sweatshop type ish. But again, you know, you do what you got to do when you pay niggas minimum wage. I mean, why does it matter? But um, legit, legit, I'm not even caring. I'm not trying to do no red coat scare. But if that reference made any sense to you know where I'm going with this, y'all, there was Russians up in the building looking real suave, looking real drip, uh, swag-like, and it tripped me out. I'm thinking to myself, well, surely there can't be no correlation between the manipulations of the... I'm thinking to myself, I mean, is not every setup... I mean, in a smart business, every setup, every turn, every, I don't know, loop-de-loop has to be for a reason whether it's for checks and balances or, you know, whether it's for whatever sort of execution, you know, be that their will in the building. And then, so once I connected those dots and I kind of made a, a mother Russia um, phrase out to my neighbor who I figured was either Russian or German, figured one of those sorts of whites. So maybe they'll understand, maybe they'll laugh, maybe they'll just totally look at me disgusted because of you know whatever so i'm trying to look for a reaction I'm trying to see where to go because i figured i'm not really taking this gig too seriously because it's the in-between you know it's just something you know to not have to be on unemployment which please believe i tried and i was thinking i would jump into workforce too quickly uh made it just for a, a check's worth and then you know uncle sam definitely make sure he got his cut from the cut that i would have gotten and, and even then and i know i'm getting sidetracked here but i thought to myself how the hell can people survive people with families survive with this minuscule amount maybe it's just a low amount that i've made but like i've be from what i remember people w- would be balling you know with them ebt cards and and whatnot and like i, I would think to myself like what do they do what are they selling maybe I maybe there was you know just being entrepreneurs you know on on one side uh and then you know collecting government check and cheese on, on the other but 
And please believe I'm, I'm, I'm not too proud to take no government cheese because it tastes real good, you know what I'm saying, on some bread that's real buttered. Uh, but at the same point, it's like, I don't know how, I don't know. Again, can't contemplate how people make that stuff work. But I'm assuming people that don't have no rent, people that don't have no car note, and hopefully wouldn't have no kids. But that's usually how they're able to get more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all know the rigmarole. Um, and it was crazy because I met so many characters. I've literally almost met every race that made me fall in love with them over again. Like the, the humanity of things. I feel is maybe what keeps things like that running, maybe that, you know, allows people to, you know, truly be in a mix of diversity that, you know, allows the world to turn. I, I can't say exactly, but I know I had real touchy moments from, you know I'm saying, my sisters in arms who, you know, you know, are hit with such tragedies for both, you know, men and, and, and their ish, you know, and for them to have to, you know, pick up pieces and survive. And I definitely saw some ratchetness too, so that's that's not to, you know, give anyone any clear way. And then a, a lady who was native, who I, I've never heard the reference of an apple. She was apparently red on the outside, one on the inside, and all this whitewashing business that, that, that was noticed and that plagues every race and creed. And it was just a trip. It was just a real trip. I, I wish that I was speaking to someone else on this topic and not, you know, after I've had a little bit too many puff puff gives, you know what I'm saying, into a closet in the darkness, you know what I'm saying, all, all amongst my lonesome, you know what I'm saying, trying to make things funny and also uh, understandable. And, um, but yeah, uh, maybe I'm going on, I think maybe I might be going off a little bit too long on this part here. So yeah, I knocked this out. Maybe I might come back to this, but uh, so much of shit is a sham. Uh, oh, definitely saw the, even the bigger of big wigs who n run things normally there amongst the creed of the, you know, that red coat that everyone must be so scared about. And uh, it was interesting. And there's definitely no doubt that um, manipulation is key. And again, the biggest trick of all is like that, you know, three card Monty, not that three card Monty, what's that trick where, you know, you, you have three cups, one ball, you gotta move all the things around. And, and so, so then if you make each cup something that people want to place their bet on, something that people want to believe and put, put themselves behind in every sense of the word, uh, you create very passionate parties, which can allow for some very, very tough effery of things and it's that in itself where you're able to see dots so easily connected like the freckles on a very very sexy neck and you think to yourself like yo i i could see things going down and who am i to argue and and who am i to, to try to you know f to fight through the muck of this who would believe me and, you know, it's just, there's just, just so much. There's just so much. And truly, not just one person can have all that power because there's so many uh, others with uh, opposing, you know what I'm saying, counterattacks. And it really made me think that we need to be able to, to truly come together and, if not, tear the system down, then just lift the things that make sense up. So that everything else can fall by the wayside and that we could trample it and hopefully forget about it. And so much of that, again, is unfortunately going to whoever's the victor. You know what I'm saying? Um, I would never want to call King James a bitch ass nigga, but for whatever he did and however he came to achieve what he has and put his namesake on something so sacred that then, you know, gets pimped out and hoed up whichever which way that you know to give you know whatever message uh, or influence that needs to be given and um it's a trip and it's scary and again all the more reason why we uh, need to work as one and be together and that's my rant that's my ramble and that's what i guess has been going on with me this past week all right so on some semi hustle tip semi just i guess being a good old member of the mesa community um sister-in-law and them they uh out where where they stay in the east valley they had uh, some kind of like community yard sale thing where i guess everyone's able to uh you know to 
have a yard sale, not worry about having to pay for permits and all that other nonsense. They can't believe cities charge you on it. They're just trying to get that cut uh, somewhat. Um, anyways, did th did that for the better part of the day. And as much as I, uh, you know, as, as, I, as I got my interior design on and trying to create these Walmart-like uh, entrances and exits where hopefully we can try to uh, swindle you into buying something, um that 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 is not a young man's game as far as you got to be an early bird and you know old folks old white folks was up at six o'clock in the morning ready to buy uh, you know a uh, one quarter at a time and uh but you know whatever I, I made my little bit of dough as far as being able to pay for the gas to get out there and then for a date night afterwards because you know you gotta have a date night every now and again or you might just want to drown yourself and your goddamn kids uh love forbid and uh, it always makes me uh my heart break when i hear that shit in the news so again i'm being semi uh funny when i say these sort of things and uh actually no i i i assume that they're hilarious because that's how they sound like in my mind and then i realize touchy subjects eggshells moving on and uh i was mad excited because months ago when because the, the whole biopic for the queen movie that was always just uh um, you know, rumors and, and, and hopes and you, cause you hear about the Sasha Baron thing and then you hear, uh, you know, about BS with the directors and then you really don't know if it's ever going to come out. And then out of nowhere, just, they, they release some kind of teaser trailer and you're like, holy ish, my nigga, it's on. And I think that's, that's, that's what kind of had implanted into, uh, me, the fam, cause the moment that uh, I made it news to my relatives, like, yo, this movie's finally going to come out. Uh, my sister-in-law and her wife were like, oh, well, then we should double date. And I, I, I feel real funny about double dating simply because not only did, are you are you trying to have a good time and, you know, to rely on schedules and people, anybody with kids know that that's just, that's just a nightmare. Um then you have to like enjoy something with someone else and if they don't enjoy it the way that you enjoy it, you almost feel like a little cheated like i shouldn't have brought your grumpy ass you don't how, how could you not like this you know same i felt that way when uh when i would interact with people who watched um the movie the shape of water and didn't like it like it's one thing if you know you saw a trailer and thought to yourself oh, i don't know that movie kind of seems out there i don't know if i want to watch it that's one thing all right you, you just you you dumb and you don't know but then for you to watch it not get it and then not captivate your heart and then I, but again this is all based on opinion so who knows that that could be full of ish but uh, in that same regard though I, i'm always uh i guess watchful for that you know whenever i had to enjoy something with someone else my selfishness just wants to you know breathe it all in because you know i know what i want and you know what to do when i get it um but anyways the the thought of oh well you know we'll dump my mother-in-law with all of our kids and you know we'll go watch and we'll have a date night and both of us have, you know, couple wise, you know, been going through some things. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Fine. They, they finally got some kids, so they're realizing how finances work in real life. And just the, you know, the the unthankful uh, service system that is being a parent. And uh, so this was, I think, very much needed for all of us. And again, doing the yard sale thing, I was able to scrap up a couple change. Uh, to not only to pay for gas and whatnot to get to where we got to go, especially since I live in effing Timbuktu. And then, uh, again, to enjoy, you know what I'm saying, a little movies, popcorn, what have you. Uh, and uh, I was mad geeked out because I've always been a fan of Queen. And Freddie Mercury had pretty much been my, and I'm, this is going to be a theme in the episode, my idol of sorts, um, both in that sense of just his fierceness, his... Uh, his aggressiveness and just kind of doing what he wants and uh you know what i'm saying getting her done and um there was something real powerful about the movie that it had a lot of things stacked up against it not only from you know the remaining living members of queen of uh, queen you know wanting the spotlight or the attention or not to be all about freddie where i mean if we could be all honest i mean when people think of queen they didn't you know they might think of the big bushy haired dude named brian who was the guitarist or they you know might think of the you know queer looking blonde drummer who was slinging all sorts of ass 
Um, but they always think of Freddie Mercury. Like, that's just point blank. Like, y'all niggas got to get over it and, and, and take it. You know, it's been so many years. Just get over it already. And I think that's what finally allowed the movie to, you know, to make its way through. And they definitely don't shine them in some kind of glorious light. Like, you definitely see the funk of the character Farouk, a.k.a. Freddy. And, uh, again, it, it was a trip because the guy who played him, uh, something Malik, and I'm going to see if I can if I can pull it up here in my notes. Um, the, he he was on, uh, what was it, Mr. Robot, which I thought was a really dope show. Rami Malik, or Malik, Rami Malik, not too sure. He's some Egyptian cat. Uh, but they, you know what I'm saying, gave him some kind of buck teeth, you know, chompers. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Give him the, the whether the superly overly gay short mustache or, you know, the long hair from the early years. And he kind of, you know, looked like him. I, I, I'm i definitely curious as to how Sasha Baron Cohen could have um, looked like had he, you know, played that role. But, uh, and, I'm, and I know he would have been down for doing some real gay shit. And, and that's, I, I guess, another thing that probably bothered me a little bit. And again, I'm not homophobic or nothing. Uh, but what bothered me into just seeing, I guess, the low down dirtiness of, I guess, how it was shelled back in the day from, you know, being stuff that popped off and, in, in, uh, you know, in male rest stops. And so to see that, you know, he would kind of be that dirty when i feel he's fabulous and deserves you know the best of the best of the cream of the crop but him to you know stew into that 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 was the only opening that's where the culture started i guess or breathed i mean uh, and then and then on, and then on the same note uh, as i talked about last week there was a girl who played mary she was catching heat for the white the straight washing of the character which is just I, I guess shows you the epitome of people want to be mad about something. And for those that don't know, they're mad that Remy uh, Malik was a straight person playing a, a gay to bisexual character, which, I mean, I can understand you wanting to be as authentic as possible, but it's about the talent. It's about the ability and it's about, I mean, more or less the talent and, of course, being able to look somewhat like him. So, uh, you know, and, and not, not to think that, you know, that Freddie Mercury, especially when he had the short hair and the pencil thin mustache, was in the epitome of the poster boy of a queer man in the eighties. But you know, it's still. But to have all the other pizzazz, come on now, not, 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 not a Kanye say, not one man should have all that power, and, and a lot wouldn't, which is what made him such a you know lightning in a bottle kind of a person. So, uh, again, so much things stacked against this movie being made and also just being believable and give or take about six or so you know noted uh caught sort of things that were moved around and, and first for movie sake which i mean come on now not only is not any movie perfect other than probably shape of water um but not everything can recount things especially with, with life because Life sometimes isn't the most exciting. So you got to make those unexciting parts even more dramatic to, again, fit in the realm and also to kind of keep audiences captivated. Uh, so, for example, from how a certain song got made as far as the inclusion of people or the timeline and and what haircut someone had by, by that period or, uh, you know, well, what else was another one? Or, you know, the sheer fact that, you know, he didn't because he Freddie Mercury, if y'all don't know, from somewhat of an Indian Muslim sort of background, somewhere in the middle between Christianity and Muslim. And, uh, you know, what what immigrant parents aren't going to hope that their kids do something that's, you know, commercially working or why they left their country in order to become like. Like, obviously, there's going to be that sort of slack, but he actually had parents that were supportive. But f to, for, <laughs> I, guess, I don't know why it's for people to believe that parents are supportive doesn't really push the dream all that often, which I think just creates a false sense of creativity needing to come from absolute scarcity. So, I, again, a little bit of BS, but again, that's the sort of magical seasonings that unfortunately movies need and and this is a big deal movie and so of course you you want to connect all the dots and you know th they made it work you know for, for even the parts that you figure oh, okay this is the corny such and such part i mean look unfortunately movies have uh 
history and themes and uh, just formats and templates. And sometimes when you notice these things happening, that's good for you that you know these things, but don't let that take away from the magic of in, in that it's what it's being created or coming out from. So again, I guess it, it takes for you to have to, because you know, if you're a fan of something, you're going to eat that shit up and not even think a, you know, bad an eyelash. And as much of a hater as I am, I was going in there not want to like certain things, but again, the sheer love of uh, of the character and what he's done and how he's moved my own damn pussy as daddy and things of that nature. Like, of course, I'm going to have the feels like crazy and, and legit, legit without trying to overhype it or give anything away because I, I didn't bother listening to reviews. So the fact that I'm just kind of throwing one in your ear, hey, you know, don't sleep on it because it, it, it was it was good. And if you like um, whether it be rock music, whether it be the the experimental thing that I feel could have blended so many different other genres from disco at one point to, I mean, straight up with hip hop samples nowadays. I mean, especially, I mean, what was it? Uh, what well, we will rock you, I think, was sampled by uh, freaking Vanilla Eyes trying to do whatever his hit single was, One Hit Wonder. Um, but yeah, well, one thing I will say when I watched the movie, for the whole first half, I had this tear that for whatever reason stayed at the very cusp or outline of my eyelids to where it wasn't dripping, wasn't dropping, wasn't blurring. Was it was just it was just hanging there. And then kind of like a Skrillex song, the, the beat finally drops and and then just feels start flowing. And I mean, the same kind of went for Amy Winehouse. So, again, I have a I have a thing, uh, an infinity for um, people, masters of the pen. And, you know, those that can speak from the heart, can shift it, can shank it, can do all these things and then self-combust. And uh, they, you know, de- definitely amongst that tier and uh, I guess without rambling on about it anymore, I just highly, I don't recommend it ish enough. Um, most certainly, I'm going to find me a bootleg because I figured I paid for it once. I, I want to enjoy me a bootleg until the Blu-ray comes out. Because I'm going to buy I'm, whatever Tuesday that comes out. I'm, I'm going to be at the store, uh, which whoever has the exclusive content or maybe where I can find it cheapest. But regardless, I'm going to purchase it. And it was a good movie. You know, very long, very drawn out, very, there's a lot of uncomfortableness in it, but I feel like it was powerful. And regardless of, uh, you know, having to cater to whatever it it felt like it had to cater to, um, I feel like it got the story across. And yeah, so motherfucking two thumbs up, booty hole. I highly recommend it. So now that I got that out of the way, I'm going to sling it to you hot like a coxman in the summertime, pitching balls, and, um, I guess flicking balls all at once. Going to the U.S. news, for y'all that don't remember or do, there was uh, some bombs that were sent out to some Democratic parties, uh, supposedly aiming at everyone on uh, Trump's shit list. We had uh, then captured some native-looking brother from Florida named uh, Caesar uh, Sayo, who was declined any sort of tribal men with, I forget who... He was uh, supposedly being a part of, which I listened a few two episodes back on that one, or do your Googles. And uh, this guy who, again, aimed at people from the Obamas to the Clintons to freaking Robert De Niro uh, was apparently a Democrat himself. People did some some dig, some digging, some deeper digging, some deep diving. I don't know what the terminology is called. And uh, they saw him at Democratic parties. They saw him actually taking pictures. Like, dude doesn't look like such a, you know, saying goon. Like, you know, he was out there looking a little bit tipsy with some of the local Democratic, mo- you know, money makers, movie shakers, whatever. And and uh, and uh, man, that makes you wonder if there is a bit of a deeper sort of uh, connection into all this and how it could even be possible. And look at that, it's scrambling the message. Why are you doing that? Why are you trying to fight me? I'm just all them, all them doing is giving a little message. It's up to them whether they accept it, whether they understand it, or they do anything with it. But all right, moving on, just so I don't get my stuff all messed up and. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Deborah Cantwell, 63 years old, of Greentown, Indiana. Now, this woman was arrested on suspicion of intimidation and was booked into the Howard County Jail uh, because she was telling her uh, 
neighbor, her new neighbors, that this was a white neighborhood and the blacks should go away. And I'm not too sure if this woman is black, I doubt it, or if her husband is black, I doubt it, because it sounds like there was one biracial baby and it offended this woman because of her, I guess, her older brother being beaten by a hard R. And, uh, yeah, so she went on in. And I feel like that's a terrible thing to have to, you know, because there was, again, a lot of nigga with a hard R's in this uh, in this letter that she'd be leaving. And, uh, I mean, at all point, I mean, I guess it all boiled down to the fact that, I mean, and I don't know whether to say, look, she felt uncomfortable. She couldn't take it. Like, is that even... A damn excuse. Is that even any reason to spew out such hatred and bigotry? I mean, unfortunately, we see it as yes. I mean, apparently, right, from the decisions that people make and the extents that, you know, that, that they take. And I feel like, you know, again, you could say a lot of the presidency is all BS and it's just, you know, keep us distracted. But in that very essence, it's a power move because it's like the... It's like it's like you moving the needle on culture or what's popular and popping. You know that if you shake rattle this cage, you're gonna get the monkey pissed off good enough to where he's you know what I'm saying he's gonna squeak and squawk and that's gonna be entertaining enough. Uh, but again, if you could train them and have them do what they with your own damn will tis, and you know you control them the game. Um, but yeah, but again, this lady just just spewing off, and I'm glad that they that they can at least make a rest. On things that nature, I'm not too sure if it got to a point they were threatening of lives, but I mean, they threw in the can. And I guess people get thrown in the can for lesser reasons, and uh, and I guess one for sure that I'll bring this up now is bring it a little bit later. There was a a cat who I think he had murdered back in '89. No, no, it was in '84. I'm gonna try to pull up the the story here and all everything, all the stories and stuff that I go over. They're gonna be in the show notes at the bottom wherever you're seeing this wherever the links and such are they will be there i promise you and uh, this happened up in nashville dude who was part of a river Rim maximum security uh his name was edmund zagorski and it was back in 84 he apparently lured two dudes into the woods i'm thinking for some gay shit but no apparently it was some kind of weed deal gone terribly bad and uh, he, I think he shot them, and then for whatever reason, to finish the job, he slit their throats. So I'm not too sure if he also did a bunch of other fuck shit in uh, in prison, because he didn't look like no pushover. It looked like he, you know what I'm saying, he probably ran the woods up in there. Uh, long story short, he got the death penalty. They gave them the option of either doing some kind of like um, prescription drug cocktail to, you know, put them out like that, which I figured would have been the easiest, you know, no harm, no foul kind of thing. He decided to go for the old good old electrocution chair. I guess it was the first time someone had chosen to do that or for someone to do that. And, uh, you know, took good, two good thrusts. And, uh, you know, they, they sent him uh, six feet deep. Uh, but I guess the, the kicker of uh, his last words, he uh, let's rock. And he was ready for it. Yo, people, I mean... I don't know how many people think about death. I'm not sure how many people are consumed by it to where they fear it. But this guy did, definitely didn't sound like he was a part amongst that. Didn't care. I wonder what his political views were and, and how he saw the current things. Because you figure people who, you know, are out there way out the door, you know, no questions asked. You know, they're probably not going to be as filtered as uh, someone with uh, either a face to save uh, or I guess you save your ass, but you know you gotta save face at the same time. As long as you gotta, you know, deal with roll with the punches of ish. So I would just, I'm, I don't know, mad curious. But people who who have nothing to lose, I, those, those are the opinions that I feel like deserve the most attention. Just because, I mean, unless just totally super vain and narcissistic, if they have any try to, you know, any sort of ethical or moral bone, you know, they're gonna want the best for the for the people. And you figure their opinion or, and their uh, bias, I guess, won't be swindled by anything materialistic. So I guess that's more or less why I was kind of curious about that. Uh, but I guess it will, really quickly, though, going back to just, you know, this, this good old generation of hatred and uh, racism. Uh, I don't know. I know y'all heard about the Garden Wall Black dude. I didn't know. Not only did it share the same last name as uh, my dude, Arizona Verse, a different spelling, of course. Uh, but I didn't know that he was going to be facing real serious jail time due to the allegations made by three white women 
who apparently were offended of him making some kind of urban uh, garden or garden house or urban farm development. I don't know how the proper way to, to phrase that, but he pretty much went, lives in the ghettos of Detroit, lived in an urban community, figured let's either do something that we can do as a community or something to, to feed, you know what I'm saying, these these hungry, hungry negras. And, uh, you know, started farming, you know, with radishes, carrots, I don't know, what have you. And uh, I figured that that's nothing but a big ops. And apparently, the, I didn't know Detroit was kind of going through its own little rendition of, uh, uh, what is it called? You know, when, like, the yuppies kind of come into the ghettos, gentrification. And, uh, you know, they want to, you know, hipster things up and make things more expensive, kick out the poor, the, you know what I'm saying, and the, and the minorities, and, you know, get to get to going. And, uh, again, they were claiming that he was straining their lives, that, you know, who, I mean, who, I imagine he must have yelled at their asses. Come on, they, they live across the street. You're working outside. You're going to raise your voice, you know, but at the same time, and I don't know, I mean, I'm sure this is with, with any race, but I noticed this with, with Tim and Whites, you know, they, they could take some offense to that. I was like, are you threatening me? Then, like, I know this this uh, the Mormon kid that I work with who I was trying to get on the show, but he just he won't do it. Whether he thinks I'm going to make him slip up or I don't know what the heck, but maybe because he's just a conservative. Uh, but this cat, though, like again, when when our judge, you know, would kind of reprimand him a little bit to kind of tell him what's what. Like he, you know, he allowed his daddy issues to kind of get in the way and, and feel like he was like threatening him. Where in the real world, someone would have swung on him already, not giving him so much. You know what I'm saying? A leeway, uh, you know what I'm saying? To kind of swindle the way that he did. Not swindle, but you know what I'm saying? To do what he did, do what he does, what have you. And, uh, but but at, at the same time, though, I laugh that, you know, because, again, he could have faced serious time. And that's something to laugh at, but the sheer fact that people, because of your social standing, have, like, almost, like, exclusive rights to being right to where someone else is automatically the guilty party. And that's terrible that we live in such a biased sort of world because literally anyone can shit on anyone. And depending on, you know, where, where you know, you stack up in life, you're going to win by default. Just how, you know, you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. But at this point, you're guilty until proven innocent. And that's, um, that's a hard truth that not most can take until they're in it. And when you realize that this ain't nothing new, this is what's been going on. You can get lost in the in the down world spiral dog of depression or you can realize you know this is what it is and then you know get strong by it and that's ultimately all that you can do one or the other shit or get off the pot damn it i'm saying because when your legs fall asleep either you're gonna tilt over and uh you know what i'm saying be laying in the fetal position or you're gonna do all you can to, to get off your ass now speaking of ass and uh and racist there was uh, some people just want to be black and this chick named Shelby Hanna, she was she was a former Missouri nurse. She got fired after wearing blackface, trying to become a Beyonce, and then her dude, just looking like a very generic thug black, apparently was Jay Z. I never seen Jay Z dressed like that, but whatever. That lets you know that they're up to some coonery. And apparently she did it back in 2009 as well when her and some other uh, whites were wearing blackface as Destiny's Child. And then ironically, just like in real life, no one knows what happened to the girls in the group. But they definitely fired her ass, the girl who who played Yonce. And uh, you figure that after all the Megyn Kelly shit, people wouldn't be doing that. You'd figure with seeing that this powerful white you know got let go for 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 speaking dumb after we've heard her say way more racist ish but definitely at the wrong time um you know you figure you maybe you shouldn't do that but again at, at one point maybe people are truly trying to 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 be activists and, and, and unless they're just being all around cunts maybe they're trying to stand up for the sheer right that it doesn't matter you know what skin color you are it's about you know who you're trying to become or the escapism and i don't know what other bs excuse you could possibly make because she looked nothing like beyonce like besides looking a little fair-skinned like there was no booty, there was no signature locks and curls. Like I, I see, she literally was just a bitch in blackface, and that is all around disturbing. 
and also just ugly, just all all around. Like she 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 if she had to be an ugly person to look that ugly with you know makeup on. I'm just saying. And uh, one of the things that tripped me out, along with the lines of uh, celebrity costumes, and I'll, I guess I'll go into a little bit later uh, about celebrity costumes. But Al Roker, I guess he's a celebrity, but he does news, so I'm gonna throw him in with the U.S. news, and especially people just doing dumb coonery sort of things. He dressed up as Doc Brown from um, Back to the Future. And people got in his ass so quickly because they're saying, oh, well, you can't wear a white face. And this is racist because you're a black man dressed as a white character. But dude wasn't wearing no white face. He didn't have no chalk or whatever it took to takes to, you know, what I'm saying to create a white face. He literally was just wearing the doctor's coat and, you know, what I'm saying the, the gray haired wig, you know, the shabby. You, you, you know what Doc Brown looks like? If not, do you Google's? And uh, or and then type in out Roker, I'm sure you'll see the picture. Like, there was no white, there was no white face in it, and it shocked me that people don't get that it's not a matter of you looking, you know, like a, a different race, and that, you know you're playing that character because it'd be it'd be unfair not to be able to you know to be whoever you want to be, but the sheer fact that you have to paint your skin, I don't pe- people weren't understanding that that those are different things, you know. And I don't know how you could possibly look like Obama and not be brown, but I'm sure there's a, you know, where there's a will, there's a way, and you just don't color your skin. Again, Al Roker was still as dark as he is, wearing a costume. You know where that costume was, so you know who he was. There was no question about it. He didn't need to bleach his skin in order for you to pull off the full costume. Luckily, the hair and the coat was enough. Again, by doing that, you're not racist. So my people who maybe aren't racist but don't realize they do racist shit, again, and I repeat, especially if it's a character where they have iconic head headpieces, uh, accessories, what have you, that's usually enough to tell who you are. And then, you know, the shading of the skin or whatever, that's 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 whole other deal. And as far as people who normally tan and look like orange Oompa like my dude about Trump, then, uh, you know, I, I don't even want to step on that because it sounds sticky and sounds way more expensive than I could ever comprehend. But again, I'll leave more costumes later on when I get up on uh, the entertainment news. Uh, I do want to get on back to some racisms. And, uh, you know, if there's not enough blacks to go around to be upset about and to kill and to swat, um, you know, of course, you know, we don't want none of these foreigners around here. And um, for whatever reason, um, and this is the thing that shows me out. Have you heard about the migrant caravan that apparently is persisting from the deep roots of uh, of South America? I'm talking about like going up Guatemala to whatever other El Salvador. All these other little things that pretty much go into Mexico, and then Mexico goes under the booty hole of the United States. And for whatever reason, Trump's been talking about this caravan that's been traveling like as if it's some kind of fucking terrorist threat that's going to make its way to penetrate, you know what I'm saying, the United States. And, you know, they're going to take over everything. And it just turns out that it's just a caravan carrying a bunch of soon-to-be illegals. You know what I'm saying, trying to smuggle them into into America. And that happens daily. If not daily, then every other day. So how we're tracking this one specific caravan through whatever sort of trenches of, you know, South America, it'd be hilarious if if this was an actual, um, like, mole. Like, we have some other, uh, I don't know, people from the Middle East. I mean, those motherfuckers get licenses to come into the states when you take these long out routes they, they're not ready for that and if they are they're learning how much of a struggle it is and thinking well shit rather just get my pilot's license it only takes 60 90 hours and i'll just fly into this bitch maybe bringing down the building maybe not but definitely a whole lot easier so i'm wondering if that's what's going on because they're making such a fuss about a single caravan and surely you know if, if if any caravan were to get spotted or pulled over you know what i'm saying no doubt those kids are going to go on foot like if if ever and i'm trying to remember the name of the documentary i think it's called way back home uh they they follow some of these little latin america kids who you know eventually find their way into uh, companies like southwest keys or whatever other place that hordes and stores you know illegal children uh, until they're of proper age to send them back or do whatever with um they i see kids and adults like literally tying themselves onto the top of train track not train tracks tra- train carts 
uh, you know, just to be able to hopefully find the proper time to, you know, jump off and not lose a limb trying to land and, you know, make it through without some coyote, you know what I'm saying, raping and taking you for all your worth. And there, there's so much stuff that goes with it. Like the fact that we're following this one caravan definitely makes me feel like this is a ploy. This is a distraction. Something's going to definitely come from this and we're going to find out what, but it's not nothing natural. And this was set in place in order for distraction and for uh, unfortunate, Lord forbid, destruction. And uh, moving on from that, because y'all could do your Googles and do all that sort of uh, research. There's this, um, with Trump, of course, wanting to stop uh, foreigners from being able to, lack of a better word, have some anchor babies, you know what I'm saying? There was a case back in 1898 uh, that the, in the Supreme Court, y'all can look up how to do with the, a Chinese immigrant, uh, but they confirmed that the birthright of uh, anyone born in the U.S. of A., which, of course, you know, had its racial underlines as to people who are even considered humans, um, but their birthright is citizenship. So unless we're going to change a whole lot of things, you know, from the Constitution, which, again, was made at a very certain part of time um, that you know definitely doesn't correlate to our our current struggles and, and battles uh you would have to be changing a whole lot of other things and that's a whole lot of work to do and then it's also going to ruin whatever foundation we feel like we've either been built upon or that we've been surviving under and at one point that can change a whole lot of things uh and it could also allow things to crumble as to what point we're going to figure that out, I, I, shit, who knows? But something of that nature is going to have to happen in order for that to ever make its way. All right, but moving on across the world, and I don't have too many, too many stories about things that have gone across the world, so this is going to be a short one. Uh, but to, I didn't really just go on to what's been, what's been up. Um, I didn't realize this, but they're saying that we've lost 60% of animal population since the year 1970 and they're saying that this generation may be the last to save nature or to try to save nature and i'm not too sure how we've evolved i, I mean i can't tell you what's you know exactly different rather than probably technology from 1919 1970 to the point of 2014 but in that 40 year span again population has gone down 60 percent so What's kind of crazy, and I definitely talked about this a few episodes back, um, and surely you could do your Googles about someone trying to do Noah's Ark. It's almost as if we're at that breaking point. Lord forbid that we had to get flooded out and washed, you know, through a freaking uh, uh, rinser, um, rinse cycle. Um, but the Noah's Ark thing of having to take this population that we have to truly try to make them, you know, expand and be what they once were again. That's truly what's going to be needed. And again, I'll let you do your Googles because that's just, that's very gnarly to think. I mean, there really is so much um, that goes into, you know, why we don't. I mean, not only are we taking certain land and do we want trophies or uh, shits on the wall, which I guess are trophies too. Uh, of these, you know, endangered species, we don't let them live because we want to put them in cages. We want to put them on display, and then, you know, we don't allow for things to, uh, you know, properly, you know, churn its way in out. And uh, hell, who knows how populated the world was as far as with natural creatures and things. And uh, you know, if we're not allowing for, you know, certain types of things to get eaten up, then they they go to the wayside, or they just create all this unnecessariness that creates us to create some kind of serum in which case you know create some kind of radiation in which case and i'll get into that in a little bit and there's just so much uh it's it's mind-boggling but i guess outside of that because of course we want to know distractions we want to think too deep into anything we might get lost into and never find our way out of like the um was it a sunken place anyways india reveals that they have their what's called a statue of unity and it's apparently the world's tallest statues, like literally twice as big as Lady Liberty, technically four times her height if you don't count her pedestal and her uh, torch and whatnot. But this statue, it's of Sardar uh, Valhabai Patel. I'm probably butchering, forgive me, but he was an Indian independence leader who was pretty much crucial and united the very fractured country of the time of the. I don't mind Google's. Y'all can do your Google's. It's a trip. 
Um, I don't know why someone would, I mean, I can understand why they didn't acknowledge someone, but to have to build it and do it up like that, like you're compensating, but you know, it look it looks really beautiful from a far distance view, especially because of the waters and stuff that's surrounding. It looks like he's just thinking, you know, diligently, which I guess is part of the culture. Um, but it also tripped me out, uh, just of the idols that we choose to have. And I was going to go into, into business in a little bit. And I guess I'll, uh, it'll bleed into itself but one of the things that i caught myself realizing um uh, that is as much as you know the bible and this is the bible thing Lumper talking you know they say about um, you know having god be your only god and what have you and back in the day old testament times you know they had so many literal figurative uh or figures of idols that they would pray to and put all this belief and shit into and that's kind of what we do now and I want you to hear me out when I say this. And again, I'm not speaking any bad juju on this, but if you think about it from New Year's Eve, you know, we're celebrating the, this lunar calendar of, you know, whatever new year. And of course, we want new beginnings. So we want to have all these new hopes and new dreams. And maybe they're old ones that we keep repeating, but whatever, we're putting hope. And whether we're putting that into the new year, and, and this new year literally is a retarded glasses that we were, you know, f- for the sheer countdown of things. Um, or again, Valentine's Day and creating whatever little things that are red and pink or can hold hearts, you know what I'm saying, to be the fabric. And mind your heart's not such a bad thing. So we're starting where, you know, they start, they start off real light, you know, and, you know, it's easy to grasp into things. And then, I mean, I don't know, St. Patty's Day, if that counts as one, you want a little leprechaun in your cooch and you dye beard to be green and, you know, so then it becomes a fiesta. And then speaking of fiesta, the single day miles, you want another reason to drink. And then all these things to where literally we make it to the point where near the end of the year, October being, of course, for Halloween, we're dressing up as other entities, other beings. We want to be scared. We want to be frightened. They literally, there's a business industry and in, in pumping out scary shit, whether that's movies or games or um, mazes and all this stuff. Just to be scared, like literally the like the theme is, is evil. And then again, just to surely catch our breath or to regain strength from whatever sort of uh, spiritual orgy of shit that we're popping off within feast. And we feast in, in a gluttonous sort of way to we celebrate the times, uh, you know, of raping and pillaging folks who were once indigenous and then having to force them to live opposite lives or some different paths. And then... To, <laughs> to, I don't know, an insult to energy or not, you know what I'm saying, base the supposed birth, because uh, I, cause I want to say it was in April time, the birth of, you know, one of the most crucial figures in the world that was a dawn for our sins, and then have it be about racing to the stores and to drive themselves into debt to pay, you know what I'm saying, to buy things and of course, you know, it's always about the thought that counts, but at the same time, there's the pressures and social injustices and yada, yada, yada. So there's all these idols that we hold so dear, and I don't know how we keep up with it. I don't know how, and maybe this is why people go mad and bonkers, crazy, and aren't able to compute or to take things because of just the pressures that we put ourselves into. And whether or not we want to live like the Joneses, it's just a matter of, oh, well, this is how things are, and this is how we got to continue. And then people hold their traditions so dear that to break them is to go against the grain. And if you're doing that, then you're crazy, and I don't want nothing to do with you. And, you know, it's terrible. And business-wise, whether it's a good note or not, and I don't think it is, 62% of jobs don't support middle-class life after accounting for cost of living and there's a article that you can read about and someone from new york you know working two jobs just to pay this expensive ass rent and then you know yeah i mean if you think about it though from what you earn normally if you're a regular adult uh you know you have your rent you have your mortgage uh, if you live somewhere i'm sure you gotta have electricity up in that bitch uh, and if you're going to have electricity, I'm pretty sure you're going to have some kind of food because you got to eat. Like, you literally have to eat to live, um, you know, then throw in, you know, whatever sort of entertainment or comfort. And 
maybe you're sleeping on a bed, if not the floor or a couch or something that doesn't require you to have to fulfill. And then on top of that, you know, which I'm sure you got to go to work, you got to get to work. So then you have, to, you have to think about your transportation. And not only does the transportation either have a car note or some kind of repair that they need, that definitely needs gas because they don't run on fucking hopes and dreams. And there's just all these things they get calculated for, not, to, not even to mention phones and how phones require internet and this and then that. So, like, there's so much to be paying to things that no matter what you figure would have been uh, an astro- uh, an astro- crazy amount back in the day, it's nothing now because just how much we need or maybe whether we feel that we need or just it, it's become to be a social norm, you know, that you're pretty much left penniless and it's no doubt no wonder that people can be living paycheck to paycheck no matter how well you plan or not no matter how unfrivolous you are shit happens you got to take care of those things and you know that that can throw you into spirals into lord knows what but lord knows that when those times happen you want to escape and now enters entertainment news. Yeah, I was laughing because uh, Steve Madden, uh, most notable for uh, being a shoe designer and whatnot, uh, he was talking smack, throwing out some shade at Miss Nicki Minaj. Because apparently, I don't know where Nicki and what public- publication she was talking to, where she's talking about deals that she was trying to get signed. I don't know what Irv Gotti has to do with it formally from or formally or credit credibly from you know Murder Inc. Uh, then I guess the ink and uh, apparently he was trying to kind of tie some knot and some deal between Nikki and Steve Madden Steve Madden was quick to jump on and say look oh there's never such deal and yada 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 and all this I guess stemming from being you know team Cardi B or team Nicki Minaj and they're both hoes they both fake to some extent my heart goes to Cardi B though she's again like like uh, Robert, Robert, what the hell? Like the bitch from uh, Pretty Woman. There's just something about it. There's something about that. This hooker with the heart of gold, you know, that has taken my life into siding for her. And, you know, what? And actually, you know, I can't even front either. When I listen to Cardi B's singles, uh, and I dared not listen to the album, I don't know why. Maybe just, I don't know why I didn't listen to the whole album, but every time I hear a single of hers, she's throwing out some truths. And it sounds like she really been through things. And there's just something about that that, you know, you can't help but love and appreciate and give credit to. And no matter what facade or image that we create, when I hear Nikki try to, you know, speak like she's some kind of Lady Gaga, English royalty type. And it ain't even a matter of race. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it come from you. You know what I'm saying? You, you, uh, you know what I'm saying? You, uh, I don't want to say some hoe from, you know what I'm saying, from Queens, but... You know what I'm saying? You, you just some hope from Queens. Like, don't try to be anything that you're not. I can understand faking it till you make it. I can understand, you know what I'm saying, having to safe face. I can understand just having a persona because I myself have a persona. But I don't know. You, you just rub me the wrong way. Speaking of people that rub me the wrong way, uh, Mr. Tyler Perry, he's finally going to put Medea to bed or six feet under of some sort. It says that he's going to be kill off the Medea in Medea's family funeral, which, of course, is going to, have to be a thing, and apparently it's going to pop off in 2019. But when they ask him, like, why are you doing this? And apparently he just doesn't want to be playing her at the age she's supposed to be while he's in that very same age. And you know, he's been doing this since 99. I guess he's also kind of doing it like a 20th anniversary sort of thing. And I ain't going to lie. As funny as the Medea movies are, as funny as her trope is, at the same time, I feel like that's blackface. I feel like that's, you know, that's really finding a, a niche part of the black community and exploiting it. And mind you, people want to make the money however they can. And, you know, obviously if it, if it, if it connects with so many people, then, you know, it's, it, there's a trueness to it. But at the same time, I, I, I kind of feel like it sets people back a little bit. A little bit. And, I, and maybe that's just me being soft in essence to where even comedians like, and mind you, I come from a, a Latin background, so uh, Chicano or Mexican-American uh, comedian like George Lopez, and he's all his little tropes about, you know, I guess inner sayings within the Latin community, more specifically for him, the Mexican community. Uh, you know, it, it, it rubs a little hard because 
whether or not a lot of people, you know, laugh at it or agree with it or find some kind of uh, familiarity with it. At the same time, it's 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 like certain racial stereotypes from like you know you adding to this right you know that like you giving white people ammo you you realize what you're doing like and it, and it's shit like that that I don't like and that annoys me same reason why like if I hear a Chicano rapper like their voice annoys me whether or not I had the same sort of uh, I don't know what similarities to them I can't stand that hate it about myself definitely don't want to hear anybody else so. Again, I'm glad he's going to kill her off. Um, of course, he's going to try to make one more dollar out of it. Why not? Um, but, yeah, that's that's uh, that's that when it comes to what he's trying to do with Medea. And actually, really quickly, because I think of Medea, and he's this is such a seasonal character as to where there's, like, a Thanksgiving Medea movie, the Halloween character Medea movie. I think there was a Christmas one. I'm sure most people do. And it's another idol uh, that I was talking about earlier, you know, from the things that we bring into our house, the freaking Christmas tree. This thing that we decorate and that we damn near pray to because it, has, it holds all these precious things under it, aka okay, presents. You know, it just it's another part of the idolatry. And again, if you don't even care about, you know, that being a bad thing, then you won't need to stress it all. But if you really look into the nitty gritty of it, that's what that is. Do Christians family have it? Of course they do. But they also might not be looking that deep into things to to figure that issue out so you know what that's that's gonna do with entertainment news because that's as uh that's as entertaining as it's gonna get moving on to a little bit of science portion uh one of the things i'm just i'm so i guess in, in, in the uh theme of black faith uh and black holes i'm talking about some black holes uh, and I always kind of mention this is always some kind of new little tidbit uh, that they're bringing up about black holes. But they're apparently, this is the thing that should me up the most because how I have been slicked into the vortex. Uh, but apparently there's a monster black hole in the very middle of the Milky Way center. And apparently, according to scientists, says that this little blob or whatever, it's sucking into its vortex at 30% the speed of light again i don't know measurements i don't know how fast, quick the speed of light is but i know it's damn instantaneously so as far as what the percentage of 30 percent of instantaneous is i have no idea but that's what they're saying and it's weird at the things that, that it sucks in and it sucks up and i don't know if black holes can can move at whatever sort of radius or if they just exist in this little blip and they suck up until you know something zip zips zips it up i ha have no idea but Again, link in the notes. Do your Googles. Lord knows what kind of energy fields and whatnots that we can be flying ourselves into because we'd be sucking ourselves up from the outside, kind of like our asshole unraveling itself to give you a whole new skin. If that makes any sense, I know it's mad frightening. Uh, I'm going to jump into health news right away. So, again, back in the essence of slinging dick in the summertime of the steamy hot waters of hot Nicaragua, um, I'm going to just fling some of this health news out to you now they're saying that 93 percent of the world's children breathe toxic polluted air each day shouts out to my niggas up in china and india now they're saying that uh, yellow fever has turned new orleans into the city of the dead and there's a story by uh, leah donella uh that from all things considered uh, under the uh, npr moniker that i wanted to to read over with y'all again i'm being a little bit pressed for time but uh, I wanted to go through this just because I felt like it was just so, so well put. Uh, but instead of that, I'm going to just leave it there in, in the notes for y'all to take a look at yourselves because I'm going to run through this here. Uh, but again, need not worry if you're not living in that sort of area because there's other things that can kill you. And now there's just more evidence between the cell phone radiation that I'm holding in my hand right now that you're probably holding in front of your face or to your ear at your hip or via Bluetooth on your dick. And yeah, there's more evidence that it can give you cancer. So God bless us all. And if, uh, but again, down with one and up with another, scientists say that they might have found a key ingredient to a universal flu vaccine. And apparently it um, has to do with using llamas. So save that antidote for your mama and take a look at the links again below and enjoy. All right, so I want to leave y'all really quickly, uh, both as I came and as I go, with a couple conspiracy theories just to kind of pull over, just to chew on, just to kind of tickle the senses, and then I'm going to say my goodbyes, and, and I'll see you again next week. Uh, but prepare yourselves. 
open your minds, take this in. Number one, and this, of course, is always brought to you by the good old folks at Chive and whoever else, you know, edited the piece. Y'all can do your Googles. Number one, any conspiracy theories online have to be periodically posted by the government in order to measure how close the general public is to uncovering the truth. Think about that, because I never realized how much I didn't know or couldn't, you know, prove until I read some of these. But now I'm really scared shitless because, again, as always, and into the early episodes of the I'm Black is Mexican podcast, aka the IBHM podcast, and we always thought the government was after us because some would go off, some would go screwy, and obviously one of my partners went, went nuts, and then you know I'm going through my rigmaroles, and Lord knows, Lord knows. All right, number two. Aliens are already here on planet Earth, and they aren't, you know, extraterrestrials, but extra-dimensional beings. With all this hoopla about the black holes and the whatnots, you know, it's, you know, we're, we're, the, we're the retards, okay? Number three, planet X is real. Orbits like a comet so that it enters into the solar system at infrequent intervals and is home to intelligent life that's affected past human civilizations. And obviously it can get well around whatever nicks and crannies are barely scrambling our tinny bits. Number four, it's quiet in space because something incredibly evil and horrific is snuffing out advanced life once it starts colonizing other worlds. And if you think about it, you know, you had to be the bad of the bad to be ruling the most vast of the lands. Number five, uh, and, and again, these, uh, I guess, are all just codes. They say that we're just cold in a simulation being run by a far more intelligent species who is trying to determine why humans died out long ago. We're just running the simple piece and part of the measures and that they run the simulation to cover millions of years to pinpoint the moments where we went wrong and to learn why civilization crumbled to prevent the same fate from taking them. And again, it's like we know when something is wrong, but we have no way to control because this effing train is going either on the bitch, off to the side, or at the top holding on for dear life. Number six, see that social media information gatherings. I gather so much data on your personality that it allows uh, effective social engineering, changing how you think, how you shop, and how you vote, which is a certain effect of your teaching the same thing to your kids, family, friends, etc. This shit passes on. Energy does not disappear simply transfer from one thing to another number seven based on ideas of the fermi paradox and the great filter it's what there is a lot of alien life out there but we don't hear or see any of it because the ones that still exist know how to keep quiet and there are some greater alien forces or technologies that hunt and destroy these civilizations and even in a more minuscule sort of way when someone finally inches their way you think Gandhi, you can think Jesus, you can think JFK they get snubbed out when it's time for that now the Fermi's paradox and the idea is that great filters look like you know, at, you know, lacks of evidence, but high probability that there should be intelligent life in the universe. Otherwise, we're alone in this vast amount of space. And if you believe in any sort of God or more magnificent being, they definitely didn't stop with us. Number eight, every UFO that has been reported is actually a part of one of the government's black budget secret programs so they can retain their $60 billion in funding to run the occasional false flag operation. And again, it's usually where we learn a little something. Supposedly learn, supposedly it's a leak. And there we go. Number nine, JFK was killed by our government because he didn't want to just be their puppet. And again, sometimes you roll with the punches and sometimes you try to wiggle off. We saw Dave Chappelle was 51 mil over trying to stand firm. Number 10, the at, they said the Atlantis is real. Humans are a species with amnesia, and we had civilization arise before us that fell so hard enough to send us back to the Stone Age. Pretty terrifying in itself. Remnants of modern civilization would, like, only last about, what, 10,000 years, and that's 
only what for the lo- for larger structures like the Hoover Dam, and then we can learn from old mistakes if there isn't any history to study, or again knowledge of how to interpret or to you know to read whatever freaking hieroglyphs. Number eleven, it says that uh, we are living in a simulation, but that you are living in a simulation. So again, it's not that we are living in a simulation, but that you are living in a simulation, and you are the only thing that is real. Everything else is a simulation. So users commenting in this thread or anything of that nature, all the other users on Reddit, users on YouTube, Instagram, the internet itself, the same that your classmates, coworkers, teachers, even your friends and family, all highly advanced NPCs, non-player characters that act like people and are 100% perfect at seeming real. And the scariest part of it is, is that you try to prove that that shit's false. All right, number 12, and this is uh, Gnosticism, Gnosticism, and they're saying that there's an evil energy called the Demlurge, and was created the universe and created the humans to act as batteries, and that fear is energy that they need, and then when we die, they fool us into going into the light by revealing loved ones to us that call our names and if we go into that light it can con us to get into like reincarnate to supply their energy over and over again and i can't have no idea whether going to the light is good or not but you figure the light will be where the truth is but if that's a reflection if that's if we're being mimicked if who knows trippy is part number 13 the past never existed the future would never exist only the present is real, and that's truly the only part that I can comment on. Number 14, they say that time is a great loop, and that we actually built the pyramids in the future. How the fuck that's possible? I have no idea, but I'm rolling with the punches. Number 15, the Large Hadron uh, Collider damage and shutdown incident was actually due to the production of a micro black hole which has sunk to the Earth's core and is eating the earth from the inside out. If that was the case, it's going to be the outer global warming that kills us. Number 16, and I'm getting to the bottom of the barrel, I promise you. The conspiracy theory that the MK Ultra is still happening. Now, the MK Ultra is pretty much what caused a lot of people to come up with conspiracy theories because the government really was spiking people's drinks with LSD and running a bunch of horrible tests involving sensory deprivation Read up on it if you want, but it's definitely stuff of nightmares. Number 17, the Mandela Effect. And we've definitely talked about this, if not on the... Uh, it had to have been an IBHM. But the Mandela Effect pretty much means that we're in a alternate reality where the theory ties into the CERN-Hadron Collider and that they turned on the Collider and then it actually did kill us all and that sudden event shifted our entire world into a parallel reality where... We just kind of continue to exist, like nothing really happened. And the side effects is that some people still remember things, how they appeared in the old reality. Number 18, Stanley Kubrick was killed for the making of Eyes Wide Shut. And that there are lots of uh, conspiracies revolved around Kubrick saying that uh, this is definitely the creepiest one because he, he died something like three days after the film's release. Like literally, it got released, they figured out what this was, oh my god, all that secrets, off with his head. Number 19, and probably honestly the most terrifying would be, you know, if there, if there was a flat earth because literally everything that we know about modern science is totally out of the window and there's actually some sort of impossibility powerful kabai uh, that can, uh, you know, then put a tight lid over the truth. But I don't believe in that. Um, number uh, 20, and I want to say, I'm going to you with one more crazy one. Okay, number 20, uh, viruses evolve quickly, but not as fast enough to produce a new strain of flu every year. So the flu is actually carefully created, reviewed, and distributed by the government to steer human evolution forward through mandatory window updates of our genetic software. Because, yeah, I mean, they can what's to stop it if you want to keep using the damn computer you're gonna need to do an update if you're gonna work at this company da, 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 and it's free oh you got me sucker number 21 last one y'all now they're saying this theory is of the yellowstone super volcano they're saying that it's actually going to erupt very soon and it's just being kept quiet by the u.s government not to cause a panic i think i might be far enough but then again when the 
the world busts its nut. Who knows what it's going to spill on to. And on that note, I want to thank you so much. If you've been listening, if you've been hanging in there, if you're still, you know, a part of this whole thing, again, know that I mean everything with love. Even when I'm talking shit, I mean all with love. I'm trying to be funny. I want so much to be funny. I'm terrible. Become more of a terrible person. So, again, if you want to get at me, talk shit, do what you must online. You can reach me at so Bopple on most social medias. Again, that's S O U L P A P O. If ever you want to toss a dollar or be a producer of the show, then by all means, I suggest you go to www.patreon.com slash so Bopple. Again, S O U L P A P O. And stay tuned because next week's episode is going to be hopefully. A reason for celebrations. We shall see. But I, Lord willing, shall be here with you. Again, God bless you. When I came. Mm.